それじゃあ失礼しますレイスとゲンどこ行くえどうしようかな Just take whatever business you have out of the student council room. <laughs> There's enough to pray behavior in here already. Triggered much? <laughs> Poor Shigami. This guy's just ripe for a relationship. You can tell how badly he wants one. He wants it so badly it scares him. Ugh, couples. You know, I understand the, the distaste for seeing couples and, you know, PDA, but my dislike for it, or like for it, is one to one correlated with how sad I am in my own romantic state. <laughs> If things are going really well for me, like with my girlfriend or whatever, and I'm in a state of love or, you know, pronounced adoration at a certain point, I see couples and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, love is just blooming everywhere. But when things are not going well, I want to cry. Them. How dare anyone else be happy while I'm miserable? That's the coping mechanism for me. Oh, solid advice from Kaguya. <laughs> wow. Wow, the hypocrisy is thick in here. This episode is called Kaguya Sees Right Through It. Oh, here comes a new challenger. An older woman, huh? <laughs> Please look at me. Please look at me. Just a glance. I really need this right now. Oh, she's got the purple tips and everything. Oh, you gotta butter them up! You gotta butter them up! Butter them up! Damn, he's got buttered. Kaguya wants to meddle. Kaguya wants to dig the knife. Just bury those feelings, Ishigami. Bury them deep. <laughs> On himself. <laughs> oh no, even in the video game, there's no escape. Mm. Likes kind girls. This is such a great way to frame this for him because this is what happened the first time in that backstory, right? He got a little bit too invested in a girl because she was kind to him. He has such a low baseline for what he expects, largely it seems because of a lack of self worth on his part, that just, you know, normal goodness is something to fall for. I'm really rooting for Ishigami, but he has a really long climb because of the way things have gone for him so far. It's going to take a, a huge leap of faith to ever put himself forward. For a girl again. But I think the, the positive side to that is it really wouldn't take much to change the trajectory. It would just take his faith being rewarded once in some small way for that to begin a positive climb. But in order for that to happen, he would have to really risk being vulnerable, like really take all of the things he's experienced, all of the pain he's had, and sort of just let that be what it is and not let it stop him from taking, you know, hopefully a, a measured action towards pursuing something like love because I don't know, I just really want to see it. <laughs> He's a sweet boy. I mean, get the feeling. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he's like deeply internalized this whole thing. That this is somehow central to his identity. A fundamental piece of who he is at heart, which is of course not true. Ooh. Ooh. I love this. This is when Kaguya's brutality becomes in really useful. I mean, you're one to talk, <laughs> but, you know, not wrong. I think the sentiment is good. It feels pure. It doesn't feel like a plot. He needs to hear this. Ultra Romantic, season three. We can maybe take a one, one step back. It's a bit much. <laughs> this is, this runs some risks. I mean, it could be great, you know? Oh. I feel like she wouldn't figure that out, though. Yeah, right. That's the risk it runs. And also, I feel like the idea of leaving it to someone's imagination might set you up for disappointment because she's going to imagine what she wants to imagine. So you're no closer to having formed any kind of connection with her because she's formed a connection with some imaginary figure. There's a lot of pitfalls here. Like, it's a mistake to think you deserve any one person's love or affection. It's just not how it works. People are independent, conscious entities. There's nothing you can do that would make you deserving or entitled to their affection or interest. But to broaden that picture a little bit in a way that I think is healthier and more applicable, more useful, is how could you deserve someone who's great for you? How could you deserve
sort of a relationship that's great for you. And thinking along those lines, an important distinction is that thoughts of deserving something serve no purpose. I think it's important to separate a general idea that humans are valuable and that every individual is sacred in their humanity and perhaps their potential from the idea that by thinking or being convinced you deserve something, that is actually a method of getting something. There has to be corresponding action. I think the reason why a lot of people focus so much on the idea of I do deserve it, I don't deserve it, is maybe that they need permission to try. But actually, I think that can be removed completely. Like you don't really need permission to try to move forward in your life. So then the question becomes something a little bit more actionable and I think really valuable. As soon as it enters the domain of not just general self-worth, but wanting a result or wanting life to sort of form around your needs, you've kind of entered a contract with the world where you're likely going to have to take some responsibility for what you are and what you're bringing to the table. So if you're a heterosexual guy, let's say, and you're, you're imagining your ideal woman, well, what are those ideal traits that you want? So if you're imagining someone who's great for you, chances are you would like to be great for them as well, right? And then you could ask yourself, well, what are the things that I could do or improve that would make me a great person for someone else? And it's not a question of blame. It's not a question of attacking yourself and feeling unworthy. It's trying to set up an accurate assessment of what you could do that would make you feel really good about yourself and also perhaps improve your chances of getting the things you want. If I had to ask myself that question, there are a bunch of things that I really want to lock down. And even if they don't go towards that aim, there are going to be things that are revealed to be things that I already want because I'm coming up with them. So for example, having a strong mind and a strong body, having emotional regulation and control, being ambitious in the right, in the right kind of ways, being able to provide for a family, being loyal, being honest, being reliable, or at the very least having principles like that that can be counted on. And also being a contributor to my community and maybe if I'm really lucky to the world. And not to say that these are the principles that everyone must follow. This is specific to me. But because of that, it's something that is clearly laid out in front of me that I can follow that would make me feel good and connect me to my own life. And maybe if things go well, it would have the consequences that I want. You know, maybe I will attract a great partner or at least it'll, it seems to me, will give me the highest chances for having a great partner. So coming back to Ishigami, there's something about this scene that's so great because Ishigami's question, I think, is the correct one if done well, if it's not about him hating himself and not getting stuck, you know, feeling like he has no permission to try for things he wants. But it's a good question. Does he deserve that in the sense of, is he being his best self? Is he working on his habits? Is he pushing himself to grow? Kage is also right because I think she recognizes that Ishigami's biggest obstacle is not other male competitors, but it's Ishigami himself. Just, just a tad bit. Dial down a little tad bit. My memory. All these tactics. How would he know? Out of the blue? <laughs> yeah. It's a long road to climb, but, you know, we can climb it. He needs experience, honestly. Oh no. She hit him with the, the innate. I think it's his isolation, to be honest. A certain kind of isolation. Yeah, oh my god, Kaguya. No, it's exactly right, I think. You can define what that means. Or maybe we shouldn't leave it to him to define. <laughs> a good man is the kind who leaves a note, a creepy note at the end of albums. Could be that. But like, more importantly, maybe just diligence, follow through. Got him. Kaguya wants to hypocrite. Ability, I, I like ability. Yeah, providing. There's an underlying thread in all this here. I mean, that maybe is a low hanging fruit here. Or if you learn anything from anime, the real way to a woman's heart is winning a race or marathon. That'll make Tsubomi love you. <laughs> Just don't pass out. It's funny that actually in this show already we've had him come second and Miyu become first. Her name is also very close to Tsubomi. <laughs> come to think of it. Tsubomi and Tsubame. Oh. Right, damn Kaguya. Who is this girl all of a sudden? If only she could take some of this advice to heart, but isn't that life? And Kaori a Swallow gave birth to part one. That is an interesting title. But we'll never get anything done. Yushigami wants to prove himself worthy. No, we would never get any studying done in here. You cannot. We'd be playing romance laden innuendo filled card games that she could cheat at. And also this, yes. Step on the competition, mow them down or whatever. Oh, that adoration though. It's cute. Oh, tell me about it. Have they read my message yet? Have they read my message yet? <laughs> Too real. <laughs> this motif. 
That was a lie. <laughs> She's got a lot of money. How much money is she making? She's got a real hustle going. <laughs> it's a safe bet. Could he be disciplined? Was he disciplined? I mean, now it's for love, right? So. There's a lot of ego at stake for him because a lot of times people who desire success will protect themselves from taking an ego hit about what they actually need to do or where their abilities actually are by conducting themselves in a manner that if they fail, they can just tell themselves, well, I didn't really try. I did that a lot as a student because I always wanted to believe that I was smart. But there came a time where I really was sort of average or below average, but I couldn't accept that fact. So rather than do the mature and responsible thing of working harder and you know learning how to work hard, I started to slack so that I could tell myself it was I didn't care. And yeah, that was a real win. <laughs> Failing your classes, that'll show everyone, Alex. That'll show the world and yourself just how smart you are. But now, Ishigami is putting himself to the test here. There's no hiding. But either way, it'll be useful. I feel like with these kinds of feelings bubbling up, he wouldn't even be able to enjoy his games. It would be lingering in his mind as he plays. Wow, I just needed someone to believe. Someone to hit him with the brutal honesty. It's not the same, but like, there is a parallel between the other show I'm watching, Jujutsu Kaisen, and the Toto Yuji relationship, not in the specifics of their relationship, but in the fact that it just took someone laying it out for him honestly that he could do better, that went this far in actually waking him up. If someone's ready for that, or if someone is aware of a goal they want that they're not able to reach, they will be more willing to accept that and actually really love it. You know, it's great when people are honest with you in that regard. When you really want something and you're not able to get it and you feel frustrated and you yourself are aware on some level that you're weak, but everyone around you is telling you that everything's fine and you're great, that's so unsatisfying. So for someone to come along and tell you, no, you could be doing a lot better. There are moments where that's the perfect and exactly the right thing to hear. It's, you know, it can be a relief. Number one, Mikuino, well done. And you improve, that's good. He was going to become the top student overnight. It's interesting to see how he really interprets this. Yeah. Yeah, this is really brutal truth. This is a bitter pill to swallow. It hurts, but it's also really beautiful. And he can too. <laughs> Those were kid gloves? <laughs> That's terrifying. Exactly. Whoops. So much for that. Right. <laughs> exam period brought with lies and bitterness. Is there any kind of any other kind of exam period? Identities intact. How do we do here? Ishigami almost made oh top 150. Never mind. Oh, Maki's number three. That's interesting. She got dropped. Wow, Kashiwagi's boyfriend really coming up in the world, huh? Blonde hair, high grades. Yes. Yes. Chika Fujiwara wants to stay over. Even better. No chaperones. Oh, I want to sleep over at Kaguya's house. Right, she wants to stay over. That was the title of the episode. Oh no, they couldn't make it. This could still be fun. Oh, it's... Oh, I didn't realize it was her. Her Taka. That is amazing and hard to believe. Wow, <laughs> this is a lot to digest. Or you just make it all a lie, just double down and lying, triple down. And Chica's enjoying it. OVA flashbacks. <laughs> oh no, I dropped the soap down this drain. I'll just get it for you. Are they actually having a pillow fight? Whose fantasy is this? Ooh. I don't know, I like it. That's true, you're tired. Every conversation is annoying. I'm not a late night video call. <laughs> So put on the spot. 
you were invited and you just you blew it. Lately, yeah. Right, that one can pull Chica. She's done everything. Ooh, fourth escalation. Gee, I wonder who that would be. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Mind blown. She's in a very honest state right now. I mean, it's not going to happen here, but I'm very curious what she's going to say. Would she pass out? Oh, she passed out. Is anyone, anyone else like this? Like, for me, I get way too honest when I'm tired. Yuki kun, oh no. Kaguya no shori. All these modes. How does she keep track? Something is so great. That's so amazing. For so many reasons. Man, that was an episode. I really, really, especially love the Ishigami sequences. He's a character that really caught me off guard, I would say, in terms of the depth and in terms of the growth I want to see. Like, I'm really rooting for him, partly because I relate to him or relate to certain aspects of him, especially, you know, as a teenager or having been a teenage boy, painfully understanding some of the pitfalls. <laughs> that contributes to me really wanting to see him succeed because at heart is a really good kid And I think the way they're going is really exciting because it's not indulgent You know what I mean? Like there are things that he has to improve and I think this was a really great and honest look for him Observing himself about ways that he's been hiding in ways that he's not living up to not other people's standards But his own standards you know, he's been sort of dodging himself because of fear of what it would mean to actually engage with the world So this was a really bitter pill for him to swallow and it's such a mix of emotions for me because it's so tragic It's so painful to you know be faced with your own limitations and realize you're not who you th you were pretending you were who you needed to be to feel some sort of, sort of stability or safety or you know have a modicum of self-worth but also it's so beautiful because that's the point you know that's the turning point where real greatness and real adventure can begin that's the thing about casting a light on the darkness you know there's a lot of things that have been living in the shadows for a while that you don't want to see but I think that is maybe also where you find the things you most need and the things that are the best for you so I'm so excited about this Ishigami arc and then the last kit was cute <laughs> I'm really happy about the direction the show has taken. I feel like it hasn't lost the levity and the fun, but it increasingly has moments like this of real drama, very deep and real character exploration.